Welcome to another patho video. Our topic today is the body's iron needs, types of iron, and iron absorption. This is the first of a two-part series entitled Iron and Iron Deficiency Anemia. What is so important about iron? Why do we even need it? Iron is vital for life. It is essential for many biological processes including DNA synthesis, transport and storage of oxygen, and electron transport, which is necessary for our cells to make ATP. For oxygen transport, iron is an important component of the hemoglobin inside red blood cells. One hemoglobin molecule consists of four total globin chains, two beta globin chains, and two alpha globin chains, which are polypeptide strands. Each hemoglobin molecule also has four heme molecules. The heme is an organic molecule made of carbon atoms attached to hydrogen and some oxygen and nitrogen atoms. Iron is in the form of Fe2+, also known as ferrous iron, located in the middle. Notice the double bonds with every alternating carbon. This is what gives the heme its color. Ferrous iron, or Fe2+, has a very important function because it attaches directly to oxygen, so the oxygen can be carried in the blood. Both hemoglobin and myoglobin contain iron. Whereas hemoglobin is found in the blood and is necessary for oxygen transport, myoglobin is found in muscle cells and is important for oxygen storage in muscle cells. Iron also is an important component of cytochrome enzymes that are iron-containing heme proteins. They are embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria and are involved in transporting electrons for the generation of ATP. Highlighted are some of the iron-containing cytochromes of the electron transport chain. At any given moment, there are about four grams of iron in the adult human body. How is this iron distributed throughout the body? Primarily, the iron is in hemoglobin. Secondarily, stored as ferritin in various cells, especially in the liver. Muscle cells use myoglobin to store oxygen inside cells. Of the average 10 to 20 milligrams per day ingested in the Western diet, one to two milligrams is absorbed into the blood and then transported bound to transferrin for use throughout the body. Most of the body's iron will be used in erythropoiesis in the bone marrow to make the hemoglobin for new red blood cells. Iron is recycled quite efficient, efficiently in the body, but about one to two milligrams is lost per day in the shedding of skin and mucosal cells of the GI and genitourinary tracts. There are two forms of dietary iron, heme and non-heme. Heme iron is Fe2+, surrounded by an organic molecule. Heme iron is the form that is more readily absorbed and comes from hemoglobin and myoglobin that is found in animals. So meat is a good source. Dietary non-heme iron, inorganic iron, Fe3 plus or ferric iron, is less readily absorbed and comes mostly from plants. Good sources of non-heme iron include enriched breakfast cereals, lentils, beans, tofu, leafy greens, seeds, nuts, and wheat. Iron is swallowed and enters the stomach from the esophagus. Fe3+, or ferric iron, and heme iron enter the duodenum where they are then absorbed into the blood. Certain foods will affect the absorption of iron. 
Some foods increase the absorption of iron, like foods with lots of vitamin C. So if you eat your steak with things like orange juice, strawberries, or broccoli, you'll be increasing iron absorption. Some foods and beverages do the opposite. Caffeinated beverages and calcium-rich foods like dairy products will decrease iron absorption. Conditions affecting the small intestine, like celiac disease, will also decrease absorption. Gastrectomy will bring about an increase in the pH of the duodenum, which will also decrease the absorption of iron from the duodenum. Chronic blood loss from conditions such as bleeding ulcer, ulcerative colitis, bleeding gastrointestinal cancer, or polycystic kidney disease all increase the iron deficiency anemia. In order to more fully understand iron deficiency anemia, it is important to understand how heme iron and non-heme iron are absorbed, transported, stored, and regulated in the body. So let's begin with the absorption of heme iron. Heme iron crosses the apical membrane of the enterocytes, predominantly in the proximal duodenum. Once inside the cytoplasm, it is metabolized by heme oxygenase to Fe2+, also known as ferrous iron. From here, it can follow one of two pathways. The first pathway is for Fe2 plus to be transported across the basolateral membrane via ferroportin 1 and then oxidized to Fe3 plus by another basolateral protein called hephaestin. Once inside the blood, Fe3 plus or ferric iron readily binds to plasma transferrin, an iron transporter made by the liver. The second pathway is for Fe2 plus or ferrous iron to be oxidized to Fe3 plus or ferric iron and then stored as mucosal ferritin. Mucosal ferritin is then sloughed off into the intestinal lumen as the enterocytes die at the end of their three-day lifespan. Please review this summary now to understand how heme iron is absorbed and processed. What about absorption of non-heme iron? Non-heme iron, also known as inorganic iron, is mostly in the ferric or oxidized state as Fe3+. In order to cross the apical membrane, it must first be reduced to Fe2+, or ferrous iron. This is done by ferroreductases. One of the more well-known reductases is known as duodenal cytochrome B and is found in the apical membrane of the enterocytes. After reduction, ferrous iron crosses the apical membrane via divalent metal transporter 1, or DMT1, with hydrogen ions. At this point, Fe2 plus may follow either of two pathways. It may be incorporated into mucosal ferritin as Fe3 plus and lost in the feces, or Fe2 plus may leave the cell through ferroportin 1 and then be oxidized to Fe3 plus by hephaestin and transported in the blood by transferrin. Please review this summary now to understand how non heme iron is absorbed and processed. This concludes the video on iron and iron deficiency anemia part one. Thanks for watching.